Let's talk stutters and eye racing. This is an issue that has been infecting a lot of us, especially lately. There's been an update to the Tempest system where we lost enabled GPU particles. Maybe we'll get it back in the update patch three, who knows? But what I can tell you is I think I found a culprit for causing stutters, at least on my test bench systems, and it's MSI Afterburner, our beloved app for changing GPU speed, underclocking, overclocking, custom curves, fan curves, overlays, all that stuff. Whenever I have it open, even if it's minimized to the system tray, it causes measurable performance issues. So that's weird. Maybe you're using this application. I encourage you to exit the application and see if you still get the same stutters. Maybe you're using something that's um, similar, but not the same, like EVGA Precision X1 or Gigabyte's uh, Control Center. I think Zeus has the Armory Crate. All of these applications do some stuff behind the scenes and that could interfere with our VR experience and our triple screen experience. So I encourage you, if you have stutters, exit those apps and test again. What about my results? Well, let's get into it. Capturing stutters is a difficult task. Whether I'm trying to do it on camera or find it in the data, it's evasive. Even though it's super obvious when you see it on screen or uh, in your headset. So I decided to use hosted practice sessions for this upcoming 24 hours of spa to kind of dial in some settings and see if I can figure this out. In this session, it's actually night with a wet track. A pretty difficult situation and a handful certainly. With this test bench, I'm running a 13700K from Intel at 5.3 gigahertz. It's still going strong, by the way. And I have a 3080 Ti running uncapped, so the frame rate can go as high as it possibly can at triple 1440p. Now, it's difficult to see at night, but I notice when looking at the trees, when looking at buildings as I'm driving, there is a judder to them, a stutter to them. It's not smooth playback, especially on some of the turns that are, um, you kind of hold the turning radius on the car and just let that uh, environment pass on by. I also took my spa 24 hour car set up to branch hatch with full fuel. Probably wasn't a good idea, but I'm testing for these hiccups. And right now I also have the data showing on the right hand side. I have my graphics tuned so that the performance is outstanding, that there's plenty of headroom, both on the CPU and the GPU. I want to catch these stutters as something beyond just me asking too much of my hardware, but I wanna prove it to be software related. In this example, the two key figures here are reprojection ratio and dropped frames. I don't have motion smoothing running or reprojection or asynchronous warp or anything like that. However, FPS VR is still running a calculation to, to determine if frames are being dropped. And what we see in the top where I have Afterburner open is that, yeah, 1.4% of frames or what have you would have been reprojected frames had I had the feature turned on. And in the bottom with Afterburner closed, we have no reprojection and no dropped frames. It is a measurably better experience. And trust me, in the headset, it is extremely smoother. But unfortunately, I just don't have a way to collect that video for you guys. So you'll just have to take my word for it. So if MSI Afterburner is super critical to your system's operation because of customizations that you've done and you need it to start on Windows startup, one thing you can turn off that should fix this issue is found under monitoring. You wanna scroll here until you find power percent, power, voltage, and then there is also power limit and voltage limit. You're telling this application do not actively monitor those metrics 
for while while you're operating. Don't do that. You know, click apply and save that. So now even when you minimize this to the system tray or have it boot up on startup, it's not going to do that stuff. So that's that's what you want. Whether you have afterburner closed or you've disabled those power monitoring settings, you will notice that it's hard to find the difference when just looking at the frame times. Here we're looking at CPU and GPU frame times and they're nearly identical. What you have to look at is the reprojection ratio or dropped frames. Even with the simple computing situation of a pretty empty brand's hatch, I was dropping nine frames in three minutes and the reprojection was over a percent. Again, it's not actually reprojecting, but something is glitching to make FPS VR think performance is suboptimal. If I increase the difficulty of the scenario, and I don't have footage of this, but I did spa wet in a hosted practice session, and we can see a greater impact to the CPU's performance. We want our data to be to the left of our refresh rate, which is at 90 Hertz, and we can clearly see the red trickle past that line. Now this is live data. I captured this from different laps. So therefore one lap is not necessarily the same as the next. However, when we look at the GPU frame times in this comparison, they're pretty much identical. So this is a little strange because we've disabled the monitoring of GPU voltage, but the delay isn't happening on the graphics card. It's actually happening to the processor for some reason. And when we look at this reprojection ratio, it is much worse with MSI Afterburner opened and doing that power monitoring. It was a stuttery mess and at 7% of frames being affected by this glitch, it was everywhere and at all times. Okay, so what happens with triple screens? Well, here's an example, again, with spa, wet, and we can see that there's a slight dip in the 0.2% lows. That is where the stutters can be captured when you use a tool like CapFrameX. You're not going to see it usually in the overall frames per second or even the one percentile. Another place you can spot this difference is in the frame times themselves, represented here in the Cap Frame X frame time chart, where those blue spikes represent uh, peaks in the overall frame time, generally associated with the CPU. The top graph shows GPU power monitoring enabled, whereas the bottom it is disabled. So I think we can clearly see up top, the spikes are bigger. Therefore, there's a greater variance in FPS delivered to the monitors. Going back to brands hatched on triple monitors, but now zoomed into just a 30 second uh, window here, we can clearly see those spikes. Also notice the frequency between the spikes and how consistent that is. This also suggests that there's an artificial influence here coming from outside the simulator. If you're suffering from stutters and you see it in sim, but you can trace it back to something like this, where this there's a, a regular frequency occurring, I think you need to look at things outside of iRacing. When we look at the FPS averages for Brands Hatch, we can clearly see the 0.1% lows are heavily influenced by this power uh, monitoring software. I completed the same testing using EVGA's Precision X1 and I captured the same results. But here's the problem. I couldn't find a way to disable that power monitoring. So you literally have to close Precision X. But this app hasn't seen an update in almost two years. So you probably shouldn't be using it anyway. That about summarizes up what I know so far. I'm curious about your experience. Are you also suffering from stutters and did this help? Are there other applications that actually cause your problem? Post a comment, I'd love to hear that. Um, if you wanna support the work that I do, I encourage you to go to my Patreon. I only have a few, but you can join them. Or you can even go to my website, benchmarkodysseys.com, where I off offer services for hardware consultation. Maybe you're building a new PC, or maybe you have a problem with your current PC and you're looking for some help. Um, yeah, that's about it. Good luck in the 24 hours if you're racing.